after giving folks a sneak preview on our Facebook group of the project that I'm working on right now, it included wing needlework, which a lot of people had never seen before. So this video is going to show you the magic of wing needlework. Hopefully this will take a lot of the mystery and introduce you to doing something new. Most fabric stores will carry this wing needle. Before we begin, I'm going to remove the regular needle and insert this wing needle so that it can do its trick. Now, if you look at this needle, it looks like a regular needle down through the center. I'm trying to get a close-up that's not too blurry. But on each side of the needle are wings. Now, you have to keep in mind when you're stitching with this needle that it is adding width to the needle as compared to a regular needle. So if your machine will only accommodate a six millimeter width, then you wouldn't want to set it at the highest width your machine will stitch because your needle is wider. So I would take it down to a five millimeter. Now most of your high-end computerized machines, when you select a stitch that's called a hem stitch, which is generally what you use this wing needle with, it will automatically default at a 5.0 millimeter width just for that reason. So don't try to make it wider because you may end up damaging something. So I'm going to go ahead and change out this needle and then we'll take it from there. Okay, we're ready to start stitching. The one thing I do want to remind those of you who have machines who self-thread the needle, you don't want to use a self-threader with a wing needle. You're going to thread the needle the old-fashioned way. Okay, as far as fabric goes, you want to use a natural fabric. I'm using a linen and you can see that the weave is pretty far apart in the fabric and it works really really well when you have something that's a little further apart because it's going to take the threads of the fabric and actually the stitch will actually pull those threads apart the needle will do that with the wings and as it's pulling those threads of the fabric apart it's taking a stitch down in there to hold them away and that's what creates the hole or what looks like a hole in the fabric. It's not actually making a hole, it just is giving the illusion. You also want to use some type of a stabilizer underneath your fabric. Now I'm using a very lightweight stabilizer. It tears away very easily, but it keeps your project from puckering as you're stitching on it. Now I've changed my foot to an open toe foot so that you can really see how this stitch works. I've also reduced the speed. And if you look, each of these holes, the machine is stitching into each one more than one time. So there's one. That's the second time for that one, second time for that one, second time for that one. One, third time for that one, third time for that one, second time for that one. So you'll see that the ones, there are actually three rows of stitches in this design. The holes in the center rows are actually gone into three times. The ones on the left and the right have been gone into twice. The thread that is being stitched is holding the fibers of the fabric permanently out of the way to create that look of a hole. Okay, the one thing that I want to assure you is the needle is not making holes in your fabric. All it's doing is it's going down in between the fibers of your fabric and pushing those fibers apart. 
Now the needle part itself, like a regular needle, may actually make a hole just like a regular needle does. But the wings are not making a the hole larger. It's just spreading those fibers apart. So if I hold this up, maybe you can see it. I can even twist this needle around. But when I pull it out, it looks like there's a hole. But there's not. Because now the fibers have gone back to where they were before. So this doesn't make the hole. The thread does. Let's fold a hem in our fabric. And we'll put our stabilizer behind the folded hem. I'm sorry, I keep bumping the... And let's get this even so I can use the guide on my machine. We'll just do it right like that. And I'm going to use... I think they call this an entre dos stitch, but don't hold me to that. And I'm going to go ahead and stitch this. I'm going in a little faster here just to save some time in our video. But again, the needle is going in and out of the same hole two times. And that is because it needs to hold the fabric's fibers out of the way. I've got a very light bobbin thread in the bobbin. And I'm using a 40 weight polyester embroidery thread on top. This type of stitch is normally used in heirloom sewing or vintage sewing. The reason I did it on my project with the embroidery was I'm trying to make a mock vintage look. So that's why I decided to use my wing needle. So, after you get your hem stitched, you know it's like 50 some degrees here, and I don't know if you can hear it in the video, but the ice cream truck is going up and down the street. <laughs> Gotta make you laugh. Okay, the stabilizer, because you're using a lightweight stabilizer, is going to tear away very easily against the perforated stitches. <clears throat> then you're going to take your applique scissors with the flat duck bill towards the main fabric. And you're going to trim along that stitch line, being careful not to cut the stitches. But then you have your hem, and it's not going to fray or come loose. So it's nicely finished on the front side and also finished on the back side. So I know you're going to ask, but will it work on cotton? Do I have to use linen? So I'm going to stitch this out on cotton for you so that you can see that yes indeed, it does work on cotton just as well. This is actually a piece of um, pretty high quality muslin so it's got a very high thread count and I'll show you in just a second that we can get the same results on a piece of cotton as we do on linen. So there you go, that's what it looks like on cotton.
So hopefully you can come away from this video with a little knowledge about what a wing needle is and what you can do with it and why I used it on this mock vintage piece. Come join us on our Facebook page and you can see the progress of this piece as I continue on with it.